Hi everyone, I'm Darwin, a customer success engineer at Zage. Today we're going to be talking about the Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer. Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer simplifies file sharing across cloud, IT, and OT environments. Each Zage Fabric user can be configured with their own file repository, enabling secure file transfer to and from any asset at any location with a Zage Fabric node. Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer is fully integrated with Zage Fabric Zero Trust Access Management, which simplifies administration, provides a unified user experience, and enables deployment flexibility with support for multiple DMZ and multi-layer Purdue model environments. There are no agents or clients that are ever needed with Zage Fabric. Everything is driven through a secure browser connection. Unlike existing solutions, Zage Fabric ensures file authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality end-to-end -end, and supports pluggable malware scanning and file type filtering in any node. For our demonstration, we will be traversing through a classic Purdue model with a DMZ layer separating the IT and OT sites. We're going to be looking at two users, Kai and Noah, who will be accessing the Zage Fabric via a web browser, which will do a reverse proxy and connect to specific devices in the OT IT site as configured by policy. In this setup, Kai is a sysadmin and as such has no file transfer restrictions. On the other hand, Noah is an external contractor with additional file restrictions imposed. The policy is configured for Noah to not only be able to allow securely transferring files out from the destination server, but not into the network where there is greater risk of security breach. For this reason, Noah will also not be able to transfer any executable files, nor will he be able to transfer files to the IT engineering workstation. We will be using ClamAV to demonstrate malware scanning. Let's jump right into how we can view and configure this file transfer policy. To view the policy, we're going to sign into the Zage Manager. Click Policies in the left navigation panel. Filter accordingly. In this example, I've created three policies. Let's dive into each of them. For this first policy, Noah has access to the engineering workstation IT. We tab over to Attributes where we can see an option for Manage File Transfer. Because it is unchecked, file transfers are not permissible for engineering workstation IT. Let's look at the next policy. Clicking on Demo Contractors OT, we can see that this policy gives Noah access to the engineering workstation on the OT side. Tabbing over to Attribute again, and we can see that this policy allows him to transfer files from the destination devices, EWS OT in this case, back to his local machine, but not the other way around. It will be a one-way direction. Files need to be under 100 megabytes, and executables are also not allowed. Now the last policy, Demo System Administrators, this is Kai's policy, where she will have access to both IT and OT machines. We can see that file transfers are allowed to and from the devices, the only restriction being that each file can only be a maximum of 500 megabytes. Now that we see our policies in place, let's log into the Zage Fabric as both users to see this in action. Let's start with Kai. Kai is a system administrator who wishes to transfer a ModScan64 executable software from the corporate IT network down to the OT side where she can use to scan her Modbus PLCs for troubleshooting. First we pull up a web browser and log into the Zage Fabric. Zage uses single sign-on SSO with secure authentication with optional multi-factor authentication. We can see that Kai has access to both IT and OT machines. There is a file transfer button available on the right hand side. Let's click on the button which will open up a new web browser tab. We follow the instructions on the screen to upload a file, either by drag and dropping or clicking the upload button. Zage will also do file scanning. I have prepared a bad.txt file, which the AV will scan and recognize as being infected. Let's upload both files. The Zage fabric will first scan the files and hold it in a repository. As you can see, the antivirus effectively scanned and blocked the infected file from getting into the system. ModScan64.exe did not pose any threat and was able to be uploaded successfully. Once this is successful, let's log into the engineering workstation on the OT side to download the file. When on the engineering workstation, we'll need to open up the Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer page to download this file. This is a unique link that is created per user session to access the Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer repository. We open up a web browser and paste this uniquely generated URL into the address bar. We select the file we want to download. We click on a down arrow to download the file. 
we can open the downloads folder on our engineering workstation to see the mod scan file. With the file being stored in the Zage fabric transfer, the user does not need to download the file immediately either. The file is uploaded once, and the user can download to the variety of workstations to be used at a later time. This can save a lot of time when deploying patches across servers, while also ensuring the same file gets used for data integrity purposes. Now let's see what the experience is like for Noah. I'm going to sign out and log into the Zage Fabric as Noah. Noah is a contractor and has limited access by policy. His entry point will still be on the OT side, where he will access Engineering Workstation OT. Noah logs into the machine, does what he needs to do to troubleshoot. Now let's say he wants to get two files out located here in the desktop, a text file and this mod scan executable. Recall that by policy, Noah has limited file transfer permissions, restricting him from transferring any executable from this destination device out to his local machine. Let's see how the Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer enforces this. Let's get the file transfer URL and paste it into our web browser. Upon uploading, we see that the text file is able to successfully go through, but not the ModScan64 executable file. Now you might be wondering, how is all of this tracked? Let's log into the Zage Manager where we can see the details of the file transfer events that transpired. Log into the Zage Manager, click Audit Logs, you can add filters, I'm going to use File Transfer. We can see what file was transferred and by what user. We can also do another filter for antivirus to see that our bad.txt file was blocked. This concludes the Zage Fabric Secure File Transfer demonstration. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to support at zage.com. Thanks for tuning in.